be down game day back here another week. You got Brent, you got Joshy. Joshy, how you going, mate? Mate, fantastic, buddy. It's all over. So, got, doing a round three review, round four preview, round four review, round five preview. Uh, yeah. Big week, mate. Some good scores after a pretty poor week last week. How'd you fare? Mate, yeah, last week wasn't too bad. I scored 1,109. Um, really couldn't sort of do much more than that, mate. I really didn't have too much on the pine. A um, couple of weak links in, in blokes like Ruben Garrick. Um, Sean Lane didn't really perform that highly. Um, but, yeah, mate, I just you know picked a solid captain again in Teddy. The set and forget sort of working so far. But other than that, mate, yeah, 1,109. I'd like to be up in the 1,200s like a few other of those key players are, but for now it'll do. How about yourself, mate? Yeah, mate, I think they're in that 11, 11, 18, I think it was. So, yeah, not bad. Look, you take it after a sub-1,000 a week before. But, yeah, like you said, you're trying to, I think, uh, only moved up maybe 2,000-odd spots with a score of just over 1,100. So it was probably consistently a pretty decent round across the board. And, um, yeah, you've got to probably improve that a little bit. Those 1,200s would be, be nice. And interesting to see you got a New Jersey sponsor there in the background, mate, uh, in the NRL mate, that is, Live team playoffs. How good is that? That's, that's Happy ridiculous, Happy little Vegemites mate. there. Bo- Bogan's up to his tricks again. Look at this. In the background, folks, uh, Vegemite, me sponsor. And uh, in the next couple of minutes, we'll find out exactly why. Uh, mate, Bogan, he went... Pretty average over the weekend, though, 988. So you can improve on that, mate, I reckon. Actually, he was a bit unlucky. He cracked a ton and then downdated afterwards. So, but, um, yeah, a bit of work to require to make this uh, draft league, I reckon. Mate, definitely. It's, it's a pretty competitive league so far. A lot of good guys in there and, and a lot of guys who I think will, will you know, slide straight into that top 1,000 by the end of the year. Um, mate, let's talk about the Vegemite. Let's talk about the crystal ball from last week. Uh, I was very, very disappointed. Look at that. None from three. <laughs> Pong will ping. He didn't score 120. Look, look, he did bounce back. So I was spot on there. I'll give myself half a point, but even a half a point won't save me. Uh, Joshy Addo Carr. Oh, mate, you're killing me. Pulling out for personal reasons. But, uh, mate, obviously, as we've said before, plenty of things bigger than rugby league. And uh, Big Semi didn't. Uh, didn't go off like a uh, like I thought he would. So, um, mate, none from three for me. Whereas, let's turn the page and Brent Hampton, boom, couple of big ticks there, mate. Talk us through those. Yeah, look, as we said last week, to be fair, we hadn't talked to each other before we come up with this. So this was the first first time we actually did this ever in the BJ on game day history. We hadn't talked to each other. I went Pong a plus seventy five. You went in what plus one twenty. So I went a bit more conservative of the two, but to be fair, he was closer than closer to 75 than he was 120. So I'll take that. Uh, and, and obviously the late time double shot, um, even a broken uh-huh. clock right is right twice a day, and that one's paid off. Look, Walker didn't turn up, but didn't matter. I'm a happy the little Vegemite. Don't you shot. worry about that, <sighs> mate. You had it done within 30, 35 minutes, wasn't it? Like you didn't even have to wait till half time, and you were cheering. Yeah, yeah, it was. I think they had both crossed the, the white line by half time, which is nice. And then obviously Ado Carr being ruled out on the, the Sunday put the nail in the coffin because it was purely academic at that point, which I felt a little bit rough for you. I thought, look, do I give him an opportunity here to change it up? And then I remembered you'd have to eat a big tablespoon of Vegemite and I thought there's no chance. So here it is. He's honouring it, the first one of the year. The Chris here it Moore is. Segment. We've got the Vegemite out, ladies and gentlemen. We are... Uh... It's a, full, it's a full jar too. It's uh, the kids haven't got into this one too much, so there's no excuses. How, how big's a tablespoon, but like, like what are we talking? Oh Jesus, this is treat it, treat it like it's treat it like it's Milo going into the tin. That's a good one. That's a good one, mate. Is that, In it is goes. that it? Like that's I'll pay that. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh. Credit where credit due. That is a heap tablespoon, Joshy. Mate, I'm uh, going to turn upside down. I'm just thinking that someone. I'm thinking that someone. I'm thinking that someone. Happy little veggie, oh, Fuck me. In it goes. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> oh. Get in there. 
I didn't even get any of it. It's fucking terrible. Get it in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's rude. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotta swallow it. Oh, you gotta swallow oh, it down. I'm stuck. <laughs> oh god, do oh. I have to let Jossie take a break oh, after that? Oh. <laughs> Just oh. down the hatch, mate. Just one big swallow. <laughs> oh god. Oh. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> look, mate. Credit oh, where fuck. credit's due. <laughs> you put it away. Uh, you it, mate. Well uh, done. You're, you're a happy little veggie, mate. Ah, uh, uh, fuck. Ah. Uh, <laughs> whoa. Ah. Oh. oh, that look, was. If I don't terrible. get another one right in the history of it, that one would have been totally worth it. Can we that chase was too the, good. Can we chase the chilies, mate? Oh, we need. Sounds oh. good. Look, I'll start us off with a bit of review last week, mate. So the first game up on the, the Thursday night, we had the Chooks taking on Brisbane, and it was a slaughter essentially. Uh, pretty much from the word go, the Chooks were all over them, and uh, yeah, the, the scoreline, the end scoreline reflected that. Um, top scorers from the game from each team: we had Joey Manu scored 92, and Angus Crichton uh, bounced back for the Bunnies. Got named to start late and um, crossed, crossed the line to, to get himself 85 points. So uh, I think he'll definitely be on the radar for a few people. Uh, this week, Joshy, and for the next few weeks, Big Angus. And uh, Matty Gillette put in a solid performance, although that, that score is a little bit inflated by a try, a little bit similar to Crichton. And uh, the return of Matty Lodge was a good one. Solid effort from Matty there, um, essentially all base. So, But, yeah, the Roosters was too good. Um Including that miracle try for jo- that team try for Joey Marley, um, which I think there was about two or three kicks, and <laughs> he's still struggling there, Joshy, in the background. Uh, oh, mate. But yeah. Fuck. Oh, that's, so, that's rotten, mate. That's. What did you just say about that game? I didn't hear any of it. Far the, out. The Chooks oh. just have really stamped their premiership foot on that. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's go. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. so the Chooks just reiterating why they're going to be a tough team to beat this year and they'll be up there again and looking to go back to back with a pretty solid performance, <sighs> mate. So that was the Thursday night and the first game on the Friday, mate. Warriors, Titans. Yeah, Warriors and Titans. Um, look, the Warriors just skipped out to an early lead and, and that was it. The Titans had their halves back for the week but really didn't show too much. Um, Look, as you can see there, the, the usual suspects over in the Warriors with Tohu Harris and Roger Tuovasa Shek was, oh, excuse me, uh, <laughs> once again brilliant. Um, oh, Jesus. Um, probably uh, a few people, I think, bought in Bryce Cartwright and stuff, so that would have been a bit of a mistake. I'm sure uh, Tommy Sankster had him. But um, look, overall. Yeah, you know, an easy win to the Warriors, but two pretty uninspiring teams so far. But from a super coach point of view, uh, you know, the biggest thing, RTS just continues to uh, to show up. Uh, the second game on the Friday night, mate, uh, run us through that one, buddy. Yeah, pretty dour affair in the end. It was uh, Tigers led oh. uh, most of the game pretty much. It was, uh, it was just a terrible game to watch from just a general footy perspective and even super coach wise. There wasn't much doing. Uh Penrith got away with it in the end, scored a late try after not really looking like doing too much most of the game. Obviously, huge conversion from the sideline for Nathan Cleary and then went on to ice the game and nailed a pretty decent field goal to, to finish it out. Uh, not much to mention in this one. Obviously, Ryan Madison was pretty big, um, showing his versatility there, moved around the park a bit. I think he, well, he slid into 5-8 for a little bit there and that score of 80 has come with... Uh, he was off for HIA for 10 minutes as well, so it could have been... Even more potentially had he not gone off, and Fisher Harris um, pretty much showing once again why he's been a nice little sneaky option for people that may have started the season with him um, in a really solid performance in the 13 jersey, which is where he I reckon he can replicate those sorts of uh, performances points wise if he's if he's named a lock, uh, even with you know kick out back it didn't um, impact his minutes so he did play 80 again but 
yeah, I think he's still potentially a buy for people. Uh, he's only about 500k. But, um, yeah, look, you're probably not going to get those big blow-up scores. I think when he scored this year, it was the first time he'd scored in about two or three years or something like that. So, Mate, And uh, Joshy, Joshy Mann saw uh, across as well just to um, – I think that might have been the first time he went over this year. So, not much, not many high scores in that game. You talked about kick out, but mate, um, look, I was I was pretty impressed with his comeback. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. He ended up so he was, I think he was named to start, then ended up starting on the bench, and then ended up playing nearly 80 anyway. I didn't see the start of it, but I noticed pretty early on he got he was on the field pretty quickly um, for a guy that's been out. Yeah, for as long pretty as he sure has. he went on for a, for a HIA for someone. Oh, I don't know. Mm. Frank Winnerstein went down injured and uh, okay. he was straight on the field. So I think he played about 73 or 74 minutes. But, mate, some glimpses. He had the knee heavily strapped, but Yeah, and he adds that he's definitely a, a weapon for that Penrith side. I think if they're going to change some things in the next few weeks, which they need to do, it'll be on the back of him finding a bit more fitness and a bit of form. He's just such a, a, an attacking weapon for him out there. And um, he might be on the radar for some people over the next few weeks, depending on how he goes, mate. Then on the Saturday afternoon, we had the Sea Eagles up against the Rabbits, mate. Mate, look, obviously a surprising result here. Uh, another one that went to uh, to Golden Point uh, with the Sea Eagles. Uh, Daly Chair Evans kicking that field goal. Now, um, obviously the big news out of this game was the injury to Tommy Turbo, that reoccurrence of the hamstring. Pretty disappointing for obviously Turbo himself. Um, you know, looked a good yeah, come back well the, the first week he was back, but um, looks like he's done the hamstring and a little bit worse than before as well. So initial talk is around that six to nine weeks out. Uh, so devastating news for him and, and devastating news for the super coach owners and for anyone who actually brought him in last week after that 156. Um, look, just, yeah, just, I guess, write it off as a loss, trade him out, get back onto someone else because... I mean, you just can't keep 700,000 on the pine. So, uh, But from that game, um, look, as you can see on the scores there, uh, Cameron Murray and Sam Burgess just continue to play well. Sammy Burgess crossed for another try. Uh, Cameron Murray with another line break up the middle from about 50 out. Just looks really dynamic this year, Cameron Murray. Um, look, whether the guys can keep going with it um, and keep up those attacking stats, that's always the question. But... Even if they don't, you know Sammy Burgess and, and Cam Murray, they're going to be good for 55 or 60 in base stats most weeks. So, um, oh, I'm wheezing, fuck. Um, oh, Jesus. Um, but, uh, and on the manly side of things, obviously, Jackie Jaboyevich, another solid game without being brilliant. Uh, and for Noah Blake, again, popped up as a, as a solid player and DCE wasn't too far behind him. So, um, look, again, probably another... Similar to the Panthers and West Tigers game, from a viewing point of view, you know, not the best. And from a super coach point of view, didn't really get the amount of tries that you'd like to see in a game, uh, but still plenty of excitement and plenty of the right players scoring points. Uh, moving on to the second game on the Saturday, you had the Canberra Raiders go up to North Queensland and continue the bad start to the season for them. Now, we mentioned it in preseason, Cowboys had five of their first six games up in Queensland, four of them at home and one at Suncorp. Now, they really haven't started off well. Um, I'm not too sure what's going up there on up there because that first week against the Dragons, they were okay. The forward pack really done well. Uh, but uh, since then, it's just all been downhill. So, uh, mate, you want to run us through that game? Yeah, so I think it was it was basically a game that I expected. Canberra finally got a bit of a dry track, definitely dry up there. and um, some of those classy outside backs finally got an opportunity to shine, and they did exactly that. Mind you, the Cowboys were pretty ordinary, but yeah, guys like Rapana obviously was massive, scored a double. Uh, Nickel Clockstad has again bounced back with a uh, what 86, and showing why he's going to be. A pre- he's also pretty much a buy again this week, and uh, if you started with him. You were doing well there. So some nice rises come from him. I mean, the way he's going, the, the fact that you can pick him in that centre wing position, um, if he keeps it up, there's no reason why he couldn't potentially be a keeper. Um, I know a lot of people look to probably use him as a transition player to some of those other, you know, perceived guns or waiting for those other guns to fire. But um, you'll do so at your peril if you trade him out too early because I think um, what he's showing is some looking really good and I have no reason to think it won't change. Uh, it will change. So... 
Um, yeah, obviously Morgan was huge once again. Everything goes through him, and um, he was really impressive. So if you had you had him, you were, you were happy there. But yeah, definitely good to see some of those outside backs for Canberra get going again, and, a, and another pretty solid performance from Johnny Bateman showing that looks like he's going to be a nice nice pickup for to hold for the rest of the year in that centre wing position, mate. And following that game, it was a, a big one for your boys. Um, obviously, the Eels getting over his yeah, on just, Saturday night. Mate, they did. It was a cracker of a game, actually. But just before we go on to that, I just uh, had a bit of a thought. Guys, you won't obviously see any of the highlights footage uh, tonight on the, on the video in front of you. Um, we had a little bit of a copyright breach last week that uh, YouTube cancelled our video for, and then the Bogan went over and um, basically covered all the highlights footage in memes. So... Uh, if you haven't checked that one out yet, it's definitely worth it because I had a bit of a giggle about it. But, um, yeah, unfortunately, there's obviously some yeah, some people with nothing better to do uh, than, you know, for us two guys trying to obviously promote NRL and promote, uh, promote Supercoach. So, um, yeah, just that uh, little bit of disappointment there. But, um, mate, yeah, look, on the Saturday night, um, the Eels just simply too good for the Sharks. Um, obviously, I watched this game and, from start to finish, it was a cracker of a game. I thought, considering the injuries the Sharks had, uh, they were just brilliant. You know, a lot of those young fellas stepped up. Uh, but the Eels have also shown that they're, you know, the most improved team in the comp by the length of the straight. Um, Blake Ferguson, King Gutho, uh, Mitchell Moses was massive. Uh, these guys are all, you know, I guess Gutho and Mitchell Moses are playing for contracts and, you know, I, I heard someone talk about it on social media earlier in the year was, you know, watch out for Mitchell Moses. He's on a contract year and I haven't seen nothing but anything to support that. So, um, yeah, massive game from those guys. Junior Paulo was massive again. Um, his first 20 minutes was just as good as I've seen from any forward in the park on any game. Uh, but look, from a Cronulla point of view, Andrew Fafita was massive. He um he had to play big minutes once uh, Aaron Woods went off with a broken foot. Uh, and with the exclusion of Gallon from the game, he was always going to play probably bigger minutes anyway. So um, Dugan went off with a HIA again. Not much surprise there. A uh, bit, bit of a hard one, obviously, for Sean Johnson owners, mate. I know you're one of them. And I was a little bit blessed with uh, trades over the weekend. We'll talk about that when the trading floor comes up. But a um, bit of disappointment there for Sharky's fans. Obviously, watching the game, expecting him to come on and do his razzle-dazzle. We got to... Uh, see Kyle Flanagan, but wasn't exactly uh, – well, oh, look, at the end of the day, you can't expect a Sean Johnson performance, but Flanagan was still solid. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we just uh, went down to the Eels. Uh, on the Sunday, uh, we saw the first game. Now, this was an absolute cracker of a game. Again, I watched this one to start to finish, couldn't stop watching, and a bit of a, a down way to finish for the Bulldogs with uh, Reese Martin missing that kick from the touchline. But, um, mate, run us through the storm just getting over the doggies. Yeah, look, I didn't actually catch all of this game, um, but from all reports, it was, a, yeah, as you said, it was a cracker, a bit of controversy towards the end there where Remy Smith scored a little bit closer into the, uh, towards the, the post and where Martin ended up taking the kick from, from the sideline, which he happened to shank anyway. So I don't know what happened there, whether he just decided to take it out a bit wider or whatever, but uh, yeah, a little bit of controversy there. Uh, obviously, one of the biggest, um, most notable super coach. Um, things coming out of that game was um, Kunbo cracking the ton. So second game for him on the wing there, and he, he looked pretty good. I'll be honest, mate, I did not see all of this game, um, but any time I did look up, it looked like this bloke was doing something. Did you actually catch much of this game yourself? Mate, I, I did. Look, I watched the whole game of this one, and he was is really he the real deal. Look, I don't think he's big as as good as people are making out. I think he's had a, a great entry into the NRL. Um, I read somewhere today, you know, comparing it to John Lomu and things like that in rugby union. Look, I don't think he's anything like that. Um, if he had been, he would have been out of New South Wales Cup a while ago and straight in there. But the fact is that the kid can play. Um, he's a big body. You know, he's 195 centimetres sitting out on the wing. He's got plenty of pace. Uh, he's got the Jamal Idris lock, so you can't go wrong there. Um, but the fact is that he ran over Cam Smith twice, and I think that was the biggest thing, was that uh, he's basically run over the best player in the game from the last 15 years and just put him on his ass twice. So every New South Wales fan would have loved to have seen that. 
Yeah, and I think from a, I mean, I I only have mainly the stats to go off. I mean, his base has been solid in his first two games, and in terms of like if you're having to play a cheapy, you know, you can pick him up in the centre wing, obviously, which is really useful, and also his dual in the second row, which um, gives you a few options there in terms of trying to pick him up if you're going to get him on on him this week. Which I think he's a must. Um, basically. You know, you compare him to someone like Corey Allen. He's obviously a lot bigger than him. Um, Corey Allen has some different attributes, but I think Akumba is the kind of guy that um, their base in the first game was 37 points and the second game was 43, which for a guy that's made his debut is pretty impressive. Um, and the thing, and the fact that he's a big body, I think he's he's going to get some of those tackle busts. And um, you know, if if he can retain his spot, there's no reason um, with that sort of base he can't. Um, regular be a feature in your, your 17 for that sort of last spot that I'd imagine there's going to be, you know, there's some a, a few guys you could go. So, look, I'll have to bring him in this week, and I think most people will um, because he'll he'll be just going up too much cash. He's got a massive um, break negative break even around 100. Um, but yeah, it's going to be really interesting to have a, a much closer look at him this week, which I'll try to do. And your mate. Your tell us about just give us a little bit of a, a sample of this trade you made, mate, with Cameron Munster, oh, misleading mate. our viewers once again. Let's get a tally on that stuff. Let's get a Josh a Joshy oh. King tally on how many times he'll tell you one trade, and then by next week it'll be something different. And here's another one, two in a row. <laughs> so uh, no, no more Vegemite, Logan. No more Vegemite. Look, um, on the weekend, I um. I had every intention of trading Connor Watson to Sean Johnson. Now, a lot of people will be watching at home and thinking, um, oh, well, obviously Sean Johnson was out. You wouldn't want to trade him in and, and you would have gone someone else. Well, technically, I didn't know Sean Johnson was out. So, <laughs> guys, Friday night I've gone to bed and, and now, as you can imagine, with, with someone like us, we, we live and breathe super coach, you know. Day by day, I'm on it for four or five hours and, and look, I just, I just can't get enough of it. So... Um, Saturday night, I'm, I'm just having this dream. I'm having this vision. And uh, the missus must have been rubbing me or something. But um, <laughs> I've, I've dreamt that I've traded out Connor Watson and I've brought in Cam Munster instead. And um, you know, truth be known, I, I woke up the next morning about 6 o'clock and, and I thought, fuck, did I dream that? Did I dream that? But... Um, I woke up at 6 a.m. for park run, mind you. I'm a, I'm a fit bloke these days. But um, I've thought, have I dreamed this? And so I've jumped on the old Supercoach app, and, and sure enough, overnight, time stamped at about 3.30 in the morning, I'd, uh, I'd traded, out Cam, uh, traded out Connor Watson and, and brought in Cam Munster. So, mate, Supercoach has become that important to me that I'm sleep trading. You know, it's just uh, – it's a problem. I'm sure other blokes out there have got the same kind of thing. but. Uh, it, it, it meant that uh, Sean Johnson was still playing at that time. Um, I have led the viewers astray. I must apologise. Uh, you can get fucked if you think I'm going to eat any more Vegemite. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so, mate, that's the story behind that one. And uh, I can tell you right now, mate, there's, there's not a bloke in his lounge room who didn't jump up higher when in the 69th minute Cam must have sliced through the defence and went from about 40 points to 75 in one play uh, because my uh, my switch was completely justified with that play. Look, next week it'll be a big tablespoon of apricot jam or strawberry jam because you're a jammy prick. I'll, I'll That's all I'm that. going to say on that one. Look, jam. Jam all day. So I think Munster obviously has, has been pretty good this year. He's already he turned up in round one against Brisbane. Uh, he's he's produced some pretty solid scores across the board. You know, it hasn't been awesome rounds two and three, but yeah, he he looks like he's uh, in going to potentially have dare I say a career best year. It looks like he's he's stepped up and he's going to own that team, and he is looking really good. So yeah, look, well done. It's it's a good trade considering they had played the dogs. That week, and they've got the Cowboys this week, so potentially some more points there coming for him. We'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, all I'm going to say is you're a Jeremy Prick, and that's about it. <laughs> talk, talk to us about Cam Smith, mate. Yeah, look, I think I was quite surprised with Cam, to be honest. Um, obviously, 
There seems to be a lot of inconsistency in the hooker positions this year. Um, you've, obviously, if you've got Cook, you've paid a high price for him. And whilst he hasn't set the world on fire um, from what we saw in round two, he's still you know, looking like he's probably going to get 60 most weeks. Uh, Cam Smith, I think on the weekend, if I'm not mistaken, he got credited with two triases, if I'm not mistaken. And I definitely thought that they were potentially things that he might shouldn't have got got accredited with or he might have got a try assist and two a line break assist whatever it was um, I still think there's a lot of conjecture around the point scoring and I didn't expect him to sort of keep some of those points to be honest but he did um, he's you know he hasn't been bad his lowest score of the year has been 46 and that was his high score on the weekend of 72 he's priced at the mid 500s his break evens about mid 50 so I think he's definitely an option. He won't play Origin. Melbourne don't play the first buy round, and obviously you're going to have to start thinking about buyers pretty soon as well, mate. So um, he might not be a buy if you haven't got him already, but he, he's you know he still he still looks like he's going to be playing eighty, and the base isn't too bad still for relevant, a boy. Yes, relevant. Still yeah. relevant, I think, and and you know for the the pedigree that he is, he's very cheap and. You know, maybe maybe this weekend he produces a ton and all of a sudden he becomes very very relevant again. But they do play the Chooks in a couple of weeks and then Cronulla in you know, a couple of weeks after that. So they've got a couple of interesting games coming up. So we'll see how he goes. But he just has a knack for, you know, he's a great player, unfortunately, as much as I hate to say it about him because he's a Queenslander. He does have a knack for just throwing that good ball to his short ball to his forward and they crash over. So, yeah, yeah. Um, Definitely an option there at Hooker if you don't have him. And if you do have him, I think he's probably served you pretty well considering, mate. What do you reckon? Yeah, mate, look, oh, good. I guess at the end of the day, um, you know, like you always say, form is temporary, class is permanent, and <laughs> and he's the epitome of that. So um, you, can, you can always bank on him scoring that sort of 50 to 60, obviously 72 on the weekend. I think what we're not getting is those those tons that he used to get. The sort of 110s, 120s, where he'd pop up with four or five try assists, line breaks, things like that. So, um, yeah, I, th- I think that's the only difference there. Uh, mate, Sunday night, uh, unfortunately, your boys went down uh, again in Golden Point to uh, to another Corey Norman field goal. He, uh, I'll tell you what, if there's anyone you want kicking a field goal in Golden Point, this is the bloke. He's uh, he's now one against the Broncos from about 35 out, and he's gone one better this week and. He's nailed it from 40 out against the uh, the Knights, mate. So, a couple of good signs for your boys. But, uh, mate, what did you think of this game? Oh, look, again, it's another one for us, to be honest, that just went begging. I think there was a, a period there where the game was on the line and no one really stepped up. It was pretty disappointing from a, a new perspective, to be honest. But, I mean, it was a good finish in the end. It was a bit of a comedy of errors with a few of the drop goal attempts in the end of it. I think Pierce might have had two or three, and Norman ended up having two or three as well before he nailed that one that he kicked. But, um, yeah, just, I mean, Ponga had a really good game from a Supercoach perspective, obviously through that superb ball to Edric Lee early, and then uh, another really good short ball um, to set up another try. So he obviously has proven in his first game back at fullback why he needs to stay there, and a lot of super coaches will rejoice. Uh, definitely that originally starred with him for the season. Looks like he's probably going to at least hold his 550k price now, and um, you know taking on Manly this weekend. No reason why he can't potentially replicate what he's done last week. Um, look, one of the big uh, issues I had late in the game was might have been a couple of minutes to go. We had a, a full set, full set of six, and we're down their end. I think we're inside their 30, and on second tackle they flung it wide to him, and he's put in a a kick over the top for Edric. Look, if it comes off and Edric scores, it's he's a genius, but it didn't. And I think there's just a few of those things that I forget sometimes that he is still very inexperienced and he does have that flamboyancy in his game. But um, that probably was a one of the real crucial turning points for us there. We could have definitely iced the game at that, at that stage and we didn't need it. But he's going to win you some games single-handedly and unfortunately you'll take the good with the bad. But I... I can only think that the good's going to outweigh the bad over the years. Um, hey, one, one guy who was massive in that game, you'll see him on the screen there for the Dragons, Paul Vaughan. Mate, he was absolutely huge. Uh, his performance, now, 
Uh, it's it's a little bit hard because I think when he performs like he did, he's up there with the best in the game in the front row. Um, this is sort of what got him in that New South Wales jersey a couple of years ago. And if he can just find that consistency week in, week out, there was a couple of years ago in Supercoach where he was just the gun front rower, and that was based on the back of tries he was scoring. Now, what we saw on the weekend was not about tries. It was just about hard running, running good lines, a few offloads here and there. Uh, mate, did you rate his performance? Yeah, he was massive. His base, I don't know if um, how many people know this, his base was about 77 points on the weekend. His minutes weren't overly inflated. He still he generally plays around that 55 mark. He played 62 in that game, but he just seemed to be taking every second hit up. I know I was taking on the snag, the bunning snags in the head-to-head, and it was coming down to Vaughan versus a couple of the guys I had. And I said, dead set, this bloke's got a twin out there or something because he's taking literally every second hit up on the bloody set. Uh, that had a couple of injuries. Um, host obviously went off and uh, they lost Sims at one stage. So, you know, potentially it might have, he might have played maybe five minutes more than he potentially usually would. But um, he still probably put in his, um, you know, performance of the year. And the week before that in 60 minutes, he pumped out 65 points worth of base, which is, you know, that's insane numbers, to be honest. So uh, every now and then he does manage to cross the line for a pie as well. Um, a couple of years ago, we saw him average 68 points. And, you know, potentially there's some of that form coming back in, in 2019, Vivani, because he was super impressive, mate. Um, Definitely. Similar to Davy Clemmer as well, who's been an absolute unsung hero for, for us starting his career. Mate, he has huge, huge sign for you guys. Look, um, I think this guy, obviously people talk about Andrew Fafida as the, I guess, the number one front row in the game. And I, I think this guy... He probably doesn't have as much excitement as as Fafita, but fuck, he, he runs ten times harder. So um, I, I love the way this bloke plays, and I think he's uh, he's been brilliant for the Knights. And the rest of your forwards up there can just learn a lot from him and work off the back of that. Um, so that's it, guys. Obviously, with the the round four review, moving into round five, you'll see the matches come up on the screen. A um, couple of coin tosses this week, but um, plenty of short favourites as well. Uh, look, the match I'm really looking forward to um, is is actually the Cowboys and the Storm, and I just want to see whether the Cowboys can step up now. A lot of a lot of I guess you know doubts around their forward pack and what are they without Tamalolo and JT's gone and everything like that. But um, they've got a chance to step up here and get their season back on track, uh, and uh, I'm I'm thinking we'll see that this weekend. Look, I still think Melbourne will probably get the victory. Um, but unlike their performances against the Sharks and the Raiders, I, I don't think they're going to get blown out of the water. Mate, what are you looking forward to next week? Yeah, mate, I think Super Saturday's got some great features. Uh, any of those games on the Saturday, it should be a great day of footy. Um, starting off with the Rabbits and the Warriors, us boys up against Manly and uh, your boys up against the Chooks. Um, I guess, yeah, it will be interesting to see. I think maybe maybe Shawnee Johnson has been rested last week in preparation for this game up against the Roosters, mate. Um, but we'll find out a lot a, a lot about your blokes up against the Chooks, who, to be fair, have, have haven't really had to get out of second gear um, so much too much this year, apart from that first game up against the Rabbits. Um, they've been impressive, so we'll see we'll see see what sort of uh, and whether the Sharks are the real deal this weekend as well, I think. Mate, I think, look, from what I saw with the Parramatta game on the weekend, I think our boys, Granola, are more than capable of making the top four again this season. They're actually, you know, contending for the premiership. Uh, but I do think that having Moylan out um, disrupts us a lot. Um, the fact that we've blooded Bronson Cherry last week and he had a cracker of a game without breaking the line or doing anything massive, um, I think the Roosters will probably be too good for us this week, but I think we've got plenty to build on. Yeah, absolutely, mate. And that Sunday game between Canberra and Para will actually be, could be a cracker as well. Para look like they're the, the Para of old from a couple of seasons ago, and I think if Canberra, you know, Canberra clicked the way they can, that has potential to be a high-scoring game and a really good one to watch to finish out the rounds. So. Mate, definitely, definitely. Uh, what have we got next, Bogan? I've got no idea, buddy. I've got fucking midges everywhere. Injuries. Obviously, we mentioned uh, a couple 
uh, there last week. Hang on, give me one second. I've got to shoot you. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Tommy Turbo out for six to nine weeks. Aaron Woods broke his foot 10 to 12 weeks. Uh, Corbin Sims was another one. You mentioned him, obviously, didn't finish the game for the Dragons. Played 15 minutes with a broken arm, so he's going to be out for six to eight weeks. But uh, massive effort from Corbin there to play uh, 15 minutes with a broken arm. Uh, Dylan Napa was another one. Now, plenty of people have got him in their team. Um, obviously, you know, two weeks in a row scored a try and then went off with about 10 minutes in against the Melbourne Storm with Syndesmosis. So he'll be five to six weeks on the sideline. Um, I've got to be honest, I, I never even thought about having him, didn't have him. A uh, bit surprised that so many people, you know, he had such a high ownership. But, um, yeah, he'll be out for a little while now. So he's probably a sell for people. And as you mentioned there, obviously, Sean Johnson was out with that quad tightness. So uh, he should be back this week. Um, and uh, hopefully the Sharkies can get back on track. Uh, moving on from that, uh, we've got the trading floor. Change places! <laughs> All right. Recap so, from last week, mate. I, I yes. did bring Johnny Bateman in. Got the job done. Week eight, I finally stuck to my word. I haven't done the Joshy King. It worked out. Obviously, Bateman's gone up a heap of cash. He wasn't awesome, but lump out a mid-50 without I, being awesome. There's nothing these, wrong with that. Hey, 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 hey. Hang on. Hang on. The problem with these videos is that we do them on a Monday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday night. And I've got a lot of time to think of these things over in between Friday and Saturday. and So so back off if I want to change a trade. But I do apologise to my fans out there, my loyal 17 of you. Um, you know, I know uh, you all expect to see my trades and, you know, my godlike status. But uh, unfortunately, I do change them sometimes. But, uh, mate, you finally got Bateman in. Well done. Thanks, mate. What's the next one? Oh, have a go. Have a go at that one. That's the dream trade. That that needs a little se- separate caption. I'd, I'd tell the story again because I love it so much. But, uh, yeah, we, we've gone through that one. Next, please. No, no. Gra- oh, fuck. Hang on. Where we go? Here we go. Um. No graphic for the other trade. I went, what did I go? Oh, I bought in Chance. Chance, Nickel, Clockstad. Um, hang on, Brent, you go through your trades, mate. I've gone through two cans. I need another one. You're on, mate. Yeah, I ended up, I was undecided on what my second trade would be last week, and I fell into the Bryce Cartwright trap. Look, he played 80. He had a you know, near zero break even. So, it wasn't too bad because any points he made, and then he was going up some cash. I still can't believe, you know, I expected him to be a bit more involved than he was. Um, potentially, had turned the corner. I was wrong. I really hope he can at least keep playing 80 for the next few weeks. If I've got to, you know, get rid of him and he's made 100k, and so be it. So I went Burns to Cartwright. I wasn't 100% sure on that trade. That's what I did, and it, yeah, it didn't really pay off, but. Yeah, it could have been worse. He, he made a bit of cash, and I banked a bit of cash. So I can't complain too much, but uh, I, hope, I was expecting a little bit more, to be honest. But anyway, it happens. So, mate, the trades are up on the screen now. This is what you're doing this week? Uh, this is what I'm thinking. So obviously, Okumbo's definitely got to come in. And I think yep. of all the guys I'm going to have to trade out, I can't trade out anyone in my front row. I can't trade out host, um, and I can't trade out... Um, McKaylee, because I have no one that can go up in there, which would allow me to pick up a Kumba in the second row. Um, right. All of my outside backs that are ready to that I'd need to trade are still still got worth some cash. Still making money. Garrick's yep. probably the closest one, but he's just a meat pie away from going up a bit more cash and Mate. probably having a, a low break even again, if not negative. You, look, you'll you'll see with my trades when they come up, but let's run on that first. Ruben Garrick is playing on one leg. He he dead set. If Turbo hadn't come off on the weekend, he would have been off the field. This this bloke, look, as tough as he is, I reckon he's got a knee issue or he's got a hemi or something. 
because he's been named again to start this week. I, I reckon he's. I reckon he busts. I reckon he's busted on the weekend, and, and he doesn't make the the full time siren. Yeah, look, and as not, I say, I mean, not, I think hey, that, hey, that's that's not part. That's not part of my crystal ball either. <laughs> there you go. So I've gone four. All right, I need yeah, that. Yeah, and I think. You know, Garner, he hasn't probably peaked in cash. He might, he might, some might say he's a little bit soon. I'm a bit concerned. The injury's copped. You've now got guys like Eisenhoof sneaking onto the bench. McQueen's making that extended side. Elijah Taylor hasn't made the, the 17. And um, I think a 39 break even. He, he might be a bit of a slow burn cow, yeah. but yeah. I had to trade someone. If he goes over for a pie against Brisbane, oh, well done if he, he smashes it out of the water. But um, out of all the guys I had to trade, even including Garrick, oh, I, I've, I've decided to go Garner, to Kumba, yeah. bank the cash. Look, and uh, look, I, I agree with you there with the West Tigers. They've gone with four, four uh, props of what do you call it? Forwards? Oh, fuck. Yep. I'm gone. Uh, four forwards on their bench, but Obviously, Michael Cheekham can slot in the centres if they need him to. Um, but, yeah, you're right. Look, they're, they're stacked with the forwards at the moment, the Tigers. So um, it's sort of a little bit of a risk. I've, I've been looking at Ryan Madison, but I reckon he'll still play 80. But, geez, if they need to take him off, they will. Um, mate, it's your other trade I want to talk about. Cody Walker in for Adam Kieran. If you do that, mate, how does uh, Harris Tavita come into your side next week? Yes, yeah, so at the moment, obviously, Cody Walker's a 5'8 only. He lost that duality. Um, so I've got Kieran currently in 5'8", Dylan Brown halfback. So I've, I've heard that Dylan Brown's going to be up up to about eight weeks out. And if that's the case, um, next week I can go Brown to Harris to Vida. And depending on what's going on, I'm pretty comfortable to do that. This second trade, this this Walker trade, uh, it could have been a range of players. This is the way I'm leaning. I don't see Walker in a great deal of teams, to be honest. Um, I'm not entirely sure what his ownership percentage is, but um, I don't mind South run. Uh, I think I've got pretty much the rest of the South side, so I may as well chuck him in as well. Um, Starting to think about the round 12, mate, as well, is a big part of this. I, I, unfortunately, I think he's a great player, but I can't, he's, you can't see him playing Origin. Um, South will play round 12. Look, you might think it's a little bit early. Some people might think it's a tad early to be thinking about that point of the year, but I'm looking at their next four weeks. I don't mind their fixtures. He isn't cheap. He's priced at just under 600K, um, but... He's only in 7% of teams at this point in time, so he's definitely a pod. And I could have gone a range of guys in different positions. Um, I didn't have to trade out Kieran. Uh, he's, he's been named in the, the 21-man squad as well. So, yeah, it, it could be Rapana. It could have been, you know, a Crichton. It could have been anyone. But at the moment, uh, this is the way I'm leaning. I was... I think 10K short, that, that turbo injury has killed me because I had actually had enough money in the bank to bring turbo in this week. And then, obviously, him getting injured has derailed that plan. Teddy's gone up enough cash that I'm now about five grand short of going Simonson, who's my, you know, that the Raiders cheapy, straight from Simonson to Teddy. Um, so it probably would have been Teddy just because, you know, you got to get him in at some stage. But, yeah, it was going to be turbo, which I would have had enough money for. But woulda, coulda, shoulda, but didn't. And this is the way I'm leaning. Yeah, fair enough, mate. Fair enough. Uh, my trades have come up on the screen now. A little bit of a controversial one, this first one. Uh, and this is purely from a cash point of view. Obviously, Robbie Farah has hit his peak with regards to cash. His break-even is 115. And I just can't see him hitting it. Um, I can see him having a great week against the Broncos, but... Uh, I'm going to bring in Nathaniel Roche. Um, now, again, this guy probably not the most consistent with regards to injuries over the past couple of years, but I do like his talent. I've watched him for a while. Um, and I actually brought in Jazz Tavanga last year because I knew Roche was out for so long. But, look, this is purely just to get an extra four, or 500K in the bank. Are you fucking laughing in the background? Okay, what's the challenge this week? What's, what's, uh, what are we eating or whatever this week? What's happening? Do I'll we know what's... Do a Vegemite again. I'll do a chili. 
All right. I'll do, so how about no, this? No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Wait, wait, wait. I'm already admitting defeat. I ain't doing a chili. Your motherfucking ass is going to do a chili. How, how about... How much, well, I apologise at home, people. How about... I don't really know how to tell you this. How about... I, what if I was to tell you that Roach wasn't named this week? I know he's not named this week. So you know he's definitely not going to play? 100%. All right, that's an interesting trade. But well, look, put it this way: there's always a time in the season where we trade out a gun to bring in a nuffy, or not so much a gun, but you, you trade out someone who's a big price, 450, 500, 550k, to bring in some bloke who's 160, so you can spend 400,000 elsewhere. At the moment, with with what Robbie Farrow is going to drop, I'm happy with my bench elsewhere with the points that I've got on my bench. So. If Robbie's going to bang out 60, you know, I've got another one on my bench who can do the same. So what I'm looking at is the money that I'm going to have elsewhere can solidify my team because at the moment um, I'm not sold on Hodgson. I'm not sold on Cam Smith. Uh, Robbie Farris had a gun start to the season, but again, I don't know sort of where the West Tigers actually sit with regards to form and whether they're actually a strong team or not. So... For me, this is all just about making cash and banking cash so that in three or four weeks' time, when I need to unload on a couple of guns who hit form, uh, that's what I'll do. And what's Roach worth, roughly? 220, 240. Okay. All right, look, I thought uh, maybe you were look, expecting him to I mean, go up in cash this week because he was playing. No, nah, look, um, nothing this week. I mean, he's still got two games to go before he... Or before he jumps up in price. So, we're, look, he, he's due to come back round six, which is next week, uh, with Carl Lawton starting there in the in the nine. And obviously, Isaac Luke, you know, he's injured every second week. I just think that eventually <laughs> this guy is going to put himself in that number nine spot and uh, and it'll be for good, provided he can stay injury-free as well. So, um, this is just a oh, – hang on. This is just a little bit of a – I guess a little bit of a crystal ball again um, it is me doing this, but – at the end of the day, regardless of whether he plays or not, I mean, I've blocked blokes like, you know, Garrick sitting on the pine, Sevo. It's just another one to join them. So That's yeah. okay, mate. I actually didn't realise he was injured either. anyway. So there you go. Mate, back after round one, he did his calf. Um, yeah, okay. And he was due to come back in either round six or seven. So um, I'm hoping it's round six, obviously. But um, again, it's just more of a... Uh, a hope and a little bit of a pot if he does come back. So, yeah. And obviously the other one is Ockenbohr in for Garrick. Um, I, I think Garrick is probably one of the most potential, uh, the biggest potential for the cheapies that are around. But like I said, what I saw on the weekend is him playing on one leg. So, um, for me, he's a risk. His break even now is around about 17 or 18, which is what he scored last week. So, if he has another week where he's injured, um, he could start to leak a little bit of cash and obviously someone has to come out for Ockenbohr to go in, so he'll be the one for me. And, mate, we, we talk about this week's trades. I mean, you and I have had a bit of a brief chat about this, that the fact next week that provided they get named, um, Harris, Tavita and Sherry will be looking to play their third games and it looks like you're probably going to want to get on both of them. Um, first of all, they they're both probably going to get some good rises, provided they they have some semi decent games this week. And um, there's probably going to be some other guys that are pretty ripe um, that you started the year with potentially um, that you're going to be able to bank a bit of cash with. Yeah. So the yeah. trades you make this week, provided you go both of those guys next week, which is probably not a bad idea. Um, to be fair, um, you know this is potentially the last chance you'll get to. You know, if you're making what I would say probably the smarter trades over the next couple of weeks to, to bring in a, a bona fide gun. And for yourself, you're looking to just bank that cash and you're probably going to start a, a raid party in, in about three weeks' time. Mate, 100% exactly right. Look, next week I will bring in uh, Harris DeVita. Adam Kieran will go out for him. And I'll bring in Bronson Cherry. And I've got Javid Bowen, who wasn't named this week. So he's, gonna, gonna, he's not going to leak any more cash. I'll bring him in. That'll give me about 800k in the bank. The following week, uh, it'll be blokes like Jacob Host, uh, Lachlan Burr, who are going to drop out in the second row, and I'm going to bring in your Reese Martins, your Marty Tapows, Angus Crichtons, Sam Burgess, 
basically whoever's in form, whoever's got the easiest runs there. Um, just to Billy kick Maybe Billy kick out. Huge one. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of him. And provided that knee holds up over the next couple of weeks, uh, I think he'll hit form. So, yeah, look, that that's the plan. Is That's the avenue I'm going to go to get two more guns. And they're going to be in that second row position. At the end of the day, these are the guys who score the biggest points in Supercoach. Uh, and for the run home and into the buy rounds, I want to have the, the best sort of second row combination that I can find. What do we got next, Bogan? Oh, fortune teller. Oh, fuck. Here I'm we having go. flashbacks already. I'm having flashbacks. Oh, can't be veggie. Are we going? That, we're going that a, Vegemite's uh, gone chili. to the head. We're going to chili. Mate, it has. It's chili. It is the wild turkeys. Um, what about? I'm, hang I'm on. What gonna, about? I've got just no a, idea. Just a woolies. It's just a woolies. No. Chili. How about how about uh, a nice spoonful of cat food, wet cat food or something from the straight out the tin? Actually, that'd probably taste better than Vegemite, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, oh, I can't. Mate, I'm what what are we looking at? Like, a chili. When I spread the toast for Vegemite, the butter goes all the way to the edge. I use lots of butter, and then, mate, you couldn't fit the amount of Vegemite in your fucking coal. <laughs> That I put on the bread. It's nothing, you know? Just that little bit of flavour. Anyway. What you had uh, was probably an entire small jar of Vegemite. You know you buy those little little jars? I reckon you've the amount eaten I a just full ate, jar. The amount I just ate was the total consumption of Vegemite for, for America for a whole year. That's how much I just fucking ate. <laughs> All right, how about um, this week we do the chilli, and then people let us know over the next few weeks. Get involved with us. What do you want us to, what do you want to see, us idiots? Leave, leave us a comment. What are the sorts of things you want us yeah. lunatics doing as a result of losing these these crystal ball sessions? What's our thing? I if just, we finish tied, we're not doing it. Neither of us have to, to do it. But if we have an outright winner out of the three, three bets put out, someone's doing something yeah. silly. Done. Done. All right. So your um, first one, Maloney tons up. Mate, my first one, Maloney tons up. Look, they're, they're playing the Titans. The Penrith Panthers have been Absolutely atrocious. This bloke hasn't been much good, but there's about two or three times a year where he turns up, plays a game of football, uh, and, and scores a ton. So I'm tipping it's going to be this week. Um, all I've got to say there, yeah, not much more. What's the next one, mate? We've got Essan Masters, I think. Yeah, look, this is a bit of redemption. Now, um, Brett and I were actually discussing earlier, in, uh, last night it was, we were talking about if we'd, you know, sort of have rules around these these sort of three, you know, crystal ball predictions. Um, one of the ideas we came up with was was someone who scored less than 40 last week but scores more than 75 the week after. And, mate, for me, this one's – look, I wouldn't say a no-brainer. Essan had a bit of a bad game last week, and I actually put that down to a lot of Josh Reynolds. Um Joshy Reynolds doesn't pass the ball as much as Benji Marshall does because Joshy doesn't mind taking on the line himself. Uh, but the fact is that SR Masters missed three, not that hard a shot to goal, which sort of would have picked him up an extra 12 points plus the six that he lost for him, so an extra 20. Um, and this guy's just a gun. So I reckon a 75-plus on against the Broncos Thursday night is uh, on the cards. And the third one, oh, here we go. Now... Folks at home, um, about half an hour before I got home, a couple of hours ago, I get a text from Brent and uh, asking if I was for real with my uh, my predictions. Because what you see here, if you change the Latrell and the Jerry around, that's what Hampton's gone. So, look, I've gone with Latrell to dominate Bronson Cherry. Um, this young fellow from the Sharks, look, obviously I'm a Sharkies fan and I love what I saw from this bloke last week. I'm not liking the story about Latrell's little, you know, nightclub binge or whatever in Tari or wherever it was. But um, I think he can hit back. I think he's due. And I think, look, this guy, obviously you've got two of the most up-and-coming young centres in the game with Latrell being already that established. So I reckon he can shut down Sherry and um, get a few line breaks and even a meat pie past him. 
I think it was a stipulation on this one. You had him scoring more than 40 points above Jerry. Was, uh, I think it was, yeah, more than 40 points above Jerry, and he scored a meat pie. So, mate, pie. I, actually, I actually put in a little bit of effort towards mine, you know? Like, <laughs> I'm not just, oh, 75 plus. Oh, come you on. put yourself out there, Latrell. Latrell I Mitchell, do, mate. The, I best, do. the best center in no, the game last sleep. year dominates the second game rookie. Oh, you've put yourself out there, haven't you? Oh, mate, he's scoring a meat pie. He hasn't looked in form all season. What are you on about? Oh, he's, he looks like he's eating a few meat pies. Come on, you psychic. Let's see. What do you got? Yeah, look, look let's just say before we do this, we, we didn't actually know who did what. So it's actually pretty uncanny, some of the stuff, even with the Ponga one last week. We both went, went Ponga. Um, but... You know, half an hour or whatever it was before this, uh, we found out what we're doing, and um, we've realised that, uh, that we're lunatics, and we think it's a little bit similar, I guess, in some ways. Mate, Pen- um, but from now on, on the time. yeah, look, because if these on, two blokes have got to set that many points up, we're in trouble. Yeah, well, look, like I said, if if from now on we're not going to, we'll tell them to the bogan, and we won't know what the other one's gone until until we hit this point in the show. And, yeah, so the stipulations are you've got to pick a player to turn up, you've got to pick a player to bounce back, so less than 40 but over 75 next week. And then you get a lot of weird and wacky, so pretty much anything, just a little bit, you know, a little bit unexpected or wild, whatever you want to call it. That's the that's the, the, the parameters around it. So this week for me, it's Ivan, Cle- uh, Ivan Cleary. Nathan Cleary. I think confidence does, does wonders for some players, and this is going to be one of those guys. I'm expecting Penrith of Villy kick out to be back that – there's a few more options out there for Cleary, and uh, I'm expecting Penrith to bounce back in a big way, and Cleary to be a big part of that on Friday night. My redemption, so me less than 40, more than 75 is Jossie Hodgson down there on Sunday up against Para. Look, I think he's Hodgson's a, a weird one this year. He's, he's looking really promising at times, but. And he, he just hasn't been able to deliver. Um, against the Knights, he was dangerous. He could have had a couple of try assists that, you know, they disallowed him or they were dropped over the line. And I think Parramatta late in the game against the Chooks showed that they're going to be vulnerable at the guts there. And I'm, I'm tipping Jossie Hodson, who went 33 last week to bounce back, maybe cross. I haven't said he had to cross, like but it. he's going to crack the 75. I like it. And believe it or not, <laughs> Jerry <laughs> dominates Latrell Mitchell. Look. From what I saw of this, Jerry, he's the real deal. He's a pocket rocket. I, don't, I thought Gutho was, had a bit of toe about him. Um, but I'm obviously wrong he, there. I, I've never seen, I can't remember the, the last time I saw something like that where it was a back on a back because he's just absolutely Mind left you. him for dead. Mind you, that was about 10 minutes to go, and I reckon Gutho had already covered 20Ks in that game. So he probably, he probably didn't have too much in the tank, Gutho. Yeah, but still, I, I, I think Gutho thought he was there and uh, Jerry snapped up behind him. And if you have a look at the vision, he, I think he shocks him. If anything, he just goes straight past him. But, um, look, I don't know what's going on with Latrell. Obviously, there's been some of that issue on the weekend with whatever's going on. Um, but I'm tipping a little pocket rocket Jerry to give him a handful. Look, I said Jerry outscores Latrell. It wasn't so much a dominate, but I will say Jerry. Look, we'll throw this in there. I don't even care. Jerry will score. And he'll outscore Latrell as well. By how many? By how many? Oh, come on. He's a second game rookie. Give me come a on, break. Mate. Fuck. At least 20. Not, he's, come on. All right. He'll, he'll well, outscore Latrell. How, 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 else, how else do you categorize dominates from a super coach point of view? I didn't have dominates. I just had the outscores Latrell, which I thought was mate, you know, reasonable. Yeah, under Bogan's rules, all right. If he puts dominates on the screen, it's got to be. All right. Look. They're paired up on each other. You know, Sean Johnson back. Sean Johnson back. What about up? Oh, and Ping Pong is 22-18 in front. Look, with Sean, Sean Johnson, Johnson back. back, he's going to add a bit of venom to that right edge. And it's going to put... Sean Johnson... You know, Latrell Mitchell loves coming out of the line, and I reckon they're going to target him a bit. Uh Moving on to the BJ and Game Day League, guys. Obviously, anyone at home who's joining in here, uh, massive, massive week. You'll see the, the best weekly scores this week. Uh, Blake with Rangers de Janeiro, 1,200. Oh, fuck. 39. Uh, had a cracker of a week. Uh, Stevie Woods, double Denman, 1,172. 
I'll be uh, venturing on down to Canberra this weekend to see Stevie. Uh, Brett and I will both be going to the Blake's wedding. So that's all the football games and Supercoach he'll be experienced for, for the next 12 months. Uh, he'll be locked into under Heidi's thumb now. So uh, had a cracker a week, Stevie, and big Marty. Marty over there in uh, WA, 1167. So another class showing from him. We won't worry about the wooden spoon. We know who's down there. Um, shout out, overall, shout out to the Rangers, six sixty five overall for round four, um, which is your solid top thousand overall nice. score for round four, mate. <laughs> and yeah, he, uh, in doing so, he's jumped to the, wasn't too impressed. In doing so, Rangers has um, jumped to the top of the, the total points ladder as well, mate. Top of the total points, he's uh, he's cleared Mana and Checkmate there, so both the lads obviously still. You know, just inside that top 5,000, but this early in the season, that's fairly solid, so can uh, still make a, a fairly good run. And obviously tied there in, in second spot is Marty. Marty, we're giving you the bronze medal just because we didn't have the graphic for two silvers. Um, <laughs> but both those lads on 4,315. Uh, Brent and I, we're labouring back. We're uh, in eighth position and uh, Joshy in 12th. So, uh, mate, we both had pretty solid weeks, but uh, just couldn't make up any ground on the leaders. Yeah, it's going to be a solid league, mate. I'll be happy to make this draft league, I'm telling you. Mate, head-to-head. Head. Uh, look, Rangers, he's got the gold medal in all three. He's had a cracker of a week and, and uh, put him up there. So he's uh, leading the head-to-head. Head. Uh, you've also got Brendan and Hells Grenies on 2-0. and oh. And uh, look, I haven't got Machine in front of me. There was a couple other guys who were 2-0 and oh as well. So, oh, But hang on, I better give a shout-out to him. Give me a sec. Uh, who also is 2-0? and oh. We've got... Oh, Big Ted. Big Ted. Can't go a, can't go an episode without mentioning Big Ted. Um, and also Jesse with Pete Top, Kevin Bottom. Uh, those lads are also 2-0 in the head-to-head. So that's the race for the Mark Gaznia and the Carmichael Hunt figurines. Uh, worth more than the uh, – uh, oh, worth more than anything. Jesus, mate, they're, they're top shelf, that stuff. They're artifacts, straight, mate. You can't put a price on, on antiques. We'll be on the road show in a few years. You'll see in front of you here the uh, the scores from the weekend. Um, you know, obviously a, a couple of good scores. Most of the the um, most of the league scored over that thousand. Uh, you'll see there Stewie with the threat. Now we give Stewie a bit of a rap last week. He scored the highest in the league. I'm 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 pretty confident he's not actually active on his team because two weeks in a row he's had Brett Morris in his team, and this week he had a couple other guys who didn't play. So, um, yeah, a little bit of a strange one. Uh, you can see I went down there to, to Marty's team. Brent, you got over the Bunnings snags, mate. No snags this weekend for you at Bunnings, unless you want to yeah, go. Yeah, look, I was a bit n- n- nervous on those revisions. It was going to be a tight one. And I think if Ravalawa didn't cross for a pie, I was eating multiple snags. Um, yeah, it was a pretty... You could have done the snags and Vegemite together. I think you would have been a bit happier. Yeah, I think so. Look, oh, that team was pretty solid, the Bunning Snags. I obviously don't know who Charles is, but the majority of our teams are pretty similar, so I was a bit concerned. Uh, he had a couple of pods. He had Vaughn, he had Teddy, he had Mitchell, so it could have gone either way, but uh, I got some love, a bit of pod love there, some junk time points, and um, yeah, got the job done. So when you play when you play this bloke, I'm telling you now, you're playing, you're eating, if you lose to him, you're eating five snag sandwiches as well. Mate, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll eat 10. I'll be happy to go and eat 10 Bunning snags over that bloody spoon of Vegemite any day of the week. <laughs> uh, let's go to the second page, mate. Who else we got? Oh, Wood, mate, Woodsy, obviously double them in there, got up by six points. Really high-scoring game there against uh, Kaloy. Um, and then a couple other good scores. Checkmate, 11-16, another solid week from him. Uh, Rangers De Janeiro, absolutely toweling up the tunnel snakes. Wow, that's a shellacking. <laughs> So uh, it was short, it was cheap, but uh, you're no longer on the top of the table there, Bogan, down to our uh, 14th spot. So, oh, well, as always, next week. Um, and speaking of next week, here are the matchups here. Um, I'm pretty sure if we switch to the second page. Do you and I, big boy? It is, mate. It is. There it is. Psycho Circus. We need Bogan reckons we need a bet. What's the bet for oh, the, we gotta put something on this one, don't we? 
Mate, You're probably bringing know. Cody Walker now, you freaking sook. No, nah, I'd, I'd have to get rid of... Uh... No, nah, I couldn't get rid of anyone. No, um, you'd probably trade I'll, Munster out for I'll him, what, to be honest. Any, any comments, leave it in the comments, guys. Much like we uh, we said for the other one. Any ideas of what we should bet this week? Uh, uh, just let us know. So we'll have a little sneaky side bet between me and uh, Brent. We'll put, a, yeah, we'll put a poll up on Twitter. Cat food, yeah. Let's go. Or we'll dry dog biscuits. I, I love dry dog biscuits. <laughs> uh, let's not go there. Um, right. else have we got? Anything else there, Bogan? Uh, we have got Rangers de Janeiro taking on Checkmate. So a couple of boys at the top of the total points that are squaring off in the head to head as well. Uh, Rang is trying to keep on top spot there uh, on the head-to-head as well as his stranglehold in the total points. So sh- should be a good matchup. And uh, Big Teddy taking on the producer. So oh. Thomas Stakes looking to bounce back after their loss. Teddy's undefeated. And um, you know, Ted- this will be – Teddy will be into you on Twitter if he you, if you, if you rolls you here, Bogan. So Love. beware. Love activity from Ted on Twitter. Uh, oh, the other thing, guys, is uh, talking about Twitter and social media, we did launch a new Facebook page today. So uh, we've already got about sort of 30 or 40 guys following that one. So, guys, feel free to jump over to Facebook, BJ and Game Day. Uh, you'll be able to find that page. We'll start to post all the videos up to there. We'll put them on our Twitter, um, and uh, we'll put them on a few of the other Supercoach sites out there as well. So just to add to what you've already seen on uh, social media, Plenty of podcasts going around. Plenty of guys who are just as enthusiastic about our super coach as us. Um, I'd love to get a podcast All Stars going next season. So uh, keep an eye out for that one. If we've got any other podcasters who watch us, um, I listen to a few of the other guys. Uh, we'd love to start some kind of All Stars league next season. So um, yeah, watch out for that one, guys. Hampton, lead us out, mate. Good luck, everyone. May the trade gods be kind, and we will talk to you next week. Say, guys.